Apologies to advance to those of you watching the cut commentary. You're not going to be hearing from much from us much in this video, but uh, we'll chime in every now and again. And now the final battle is come. Marie is waiting for you, my friend. She knows what you have done. She knows everything. Marie has hoped all this time that you would save the world, and here you are on the brink of it. You stand upon a knife edge. She has kept faith in you despite everything. Now you must fulfill your destiny, and the truth will out. I will help you, old friend. I will be with you in this, your moment of victory. Congratulations. You have done well, my friend. I see you have united the powers. Excellent. We can now end this. Once and for all. Come. Yes. Let's bring an end to this charade. Finally, it is time for the truth. Let us remove our masks. You are the Lord of the Necromancers. The final Lord. Now you begin to understand. Yes, Gabriel. It was I who cast the spell that separated the Earth from the heavens. I knew this would force my brothers and sister in heaven to contact the Order here on Earth. The prophecy was their little ray of hope in the dark. We Lords of Shadow, as you call us, have been impotent for far too long, fixed in an uneasy truce for many centuries, each possessing our share of the power, but each unable to have mastery over the others. Until now. I grew so tired of these years of proliferation, a constant truce between the three of us, each unwilling to concede or cooperate with the others. They were too blind to see the potential in the power we held. If only it were combined. I desired that ultimate power and was prepared to probe the very depths of hell in search of knowledge to acquire it. I fought hordes of demons and became strong. Then a force so vast and terrible entered into me, expanding my knowledge of the dark arts until it reached unimagined heights. All I needed was someone to restore the luminous power of the spirits according to the prophecy, and you have been the perfect dupe. Of course, I couldn't arouse their suspicions that it was I who desired the power for my own. No, I used the prophecy as my cover. And you, my shining knight. I will not allow you to stand in my way, Zobek. I'm sure you won't. But you really have no say in the matter, my dear friend. 
I could quite easily kill you for your insolence. But fortunately, there is no need. What do you mean? The Gauntlet will do it for me. As I told you, dark power is my dominion, forged in the pits of hell no less. There was just the small matter of the child and her protector. But you came through with flying colors. <laughs> I needed your strength of will and courage to complete the quest, but I couldn't risk you becoming too powerful. I needed to control you at the end, once you had murdered them. I knew you would never be able to challenge me whilst wearing it. Poor little Claudia. Such a sweet thing. No. You have exceeded even my wildest expectations, killing and butchering your way to victory. There is a terrible darkness in you, my friend. Your burning desire to resurrect your darling Marie has blinded you to it. As you slept, I was able to influence you with this mask. But even I did not foresee the beast that lay within. It was all too easy to make you kill them. Your penchant for murder and death were insatiable. You just needed a little nudge, and off you would go in search of the one thing that could bring her back. Yes, Gabriel, now you finally understand. It was you who murdered your wife. No! You lie! Bastard! Search your soul, Gabriel. You know it to be true. I was worried she would reveal my charade to you at the lake. But it seems she had a false hope that even a killer such as you could redeem himself and save the world. Even the child, Claudia, could see her own demise at your hands. And yet she also trusted in you to the bitter end. Glorious, isn't it? God himself sees you for what you are. A cold-blooded murderer. Beyond redemption? Beyond... Hope! Ah! 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 Let me free you of your heavy oh. burden. Goodbye, old friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hail, mighty Zelbeck. Who's there? Who? Don't you remember me? I came to you in the void. I granted you knowledge and power. Power that you could never have obtained on your own. Surely you hadn't forgotten. In fact, I planted the idea for this whole elaborate ruse into your tiny mind, in order to serve my own higher purpose. I no longer need your assistance. The power is now mine. No! No! Father, I come for you. Before the end, 
You will bow down to me! It is your time, Gabriel. Don't be afraid. Come with us. Join us. Get away from him. Don't wake him. Don't touch him! You cannot have him! <laughs> if you take him, we are all lost. Darkness will triumph, and there will never, ever be peace or hope. We will be trapped here forever. Don't you see? We must grant him the power to go will back. Will he free us? Will we see the light that was promised? I believe in him. His heart is pure. He is our last hope. Our only hope. So, he has abandoned you too. So be it. Join me. I will love you more than he. I was adored once above all others. I, too, didn't deserve to be cast out, abandoned. Now you know what that feels like, don't you? Hate can bring us back, give us strength, embrace it. It is what is in men's hearts that he cares about. He loves you as he loves me. We have only to ask for forgiveness deep within ourselves and be welcomed back. You monkeys don't deserve redemption. It is my divine right to rule by his side as an equal, or perhaps more than that. You would rather rule in power and might than to offer forgiveness and love. This is why you are cast out, unholy one. You dare to challenge me? You will die for your blasphemy. Your soul belongs to me. All right, so we're fighting Satan now. Oh, this took a turn. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Pan was preparing us for the fight against Satan with that whole thing about uh, light and shadow countering each other. Didn't Pan teach you anything? And in case you forget, uh, Satan will outright taunt you about it. Convenient. Yeah, I, I really like this fight. I don't like it as much as the... Uh, uh, as the fight against uh, against Pan, but it's still really good. Impossible! Is that the power of God? There's also this part where you have to stand inside of the circle while activating each part of uh, magic. But what pe most people don't know is that you can switch uh, you can switch magic while you're inside, which is something that the game doesn't really tell you, and it makes that part a lot easier.
right, so then we get to phase two, which is also really, really cool, um, where he will, uh, uh, you know, he'll he'll actually, you know, cause earthquakes that could damage you if you're not double jumping. Um, and uh, he will also, he also has a special gimmick attack, a further gimmick attack with the two different types of magic. Damn you, Gabriel! I don't know how that works, considering that's Satan talking, but okay. So we have these magic circles. Uh, they will not harm you as long as you have the the right colored magic active while you're walking inside them. So I have I had light magic active. If I had stood inside those orange circles, it would have hurt me. Okay, and it's specifically walking. You can double jump over them. Yeah, you can jump. As long you have to be you can't be touching the ground. Also, that threat to wipe out the name of Belmont is not exactly uh, a big threat, considering Gabriel is the only Belmont in this timeline. That's called foreshadowing, kids. Die, Belmont! You don't belong in this world. Hmm. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. Oh my god, I can't wait for the QTE for this. No! Stay back from me. I would just like to point out that Gabriel is such a ferocious fighter that he has gotten Satan, King of the Angels, pleading for him to stop. Mm. Begging him. Please, g stay away from me. Anyway, here's the ending. My love. My alive. No. 
I do not want this. Why has my life been given back to me? It is your fate. You have been given back what was wrongfully taken from you. To repent your sins. To make amends. But without you... You freed them all. You saved us all, my Gabriel. I couldn't save you. I knew I could not tell you. Or despair would have eroded your resolve and everything would have been lost. I had faith in you. Hoped that you would be strong enough to free the world. And you did not let me down. I am not worthy of your faith. Your love. I am nothing. You are a good man, Gabriel. You are as God intended. Fallible, yet capable of great things. I loved you then, as I love you now. I see before me a man who has regained God's favor and who has my forgiveness and the forgiveness of all the lost souls of this world. You have saved us all and you have saved yourself. The mask is a powerful device. It allows us to see through God's eyes. Can it really bring the dead back? Yes. Look. late for me, my love. I cannot come back. No. No, don't go. It is my time. The light is calling. I'm not no. afraid. Please, stay. Stay with me. It's beautiful, Gabriel. So beautiful. It's calling to me. Calling. I love you, Marie. I love you. So that Lords of Shadow. What, really? <laughs> well, it's only kind of. Uh, there's still a seven minute post credit scene we have to get through. But yeah, that's the basic <sighs> ending. Uh, I, I'm speeding up through. I'm speeding these credits up a little bit, by the way. Um, OK, so yeah, we got about two and a half minutes to uh, to unpack things before the, the post credit scene starts. So what do you think so far before the next series of amazing revelations hits us? Oh my God, there's more revelations. Yes. What the fuck? Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Like, I legitimately enjoyed this game. The attention to detail was amazing. Um, The characters were great. Patrick Stewart, wonderful narration work. Uh, like I said, I could smell a heel turn coming a mile away. Yeah. And and letting him chew the scenery is the absolute best decision you will ever make. Like, just tell him, Pat, pretend you're on the holodeck, <laughs> and and go to fucking town, right? And that uh, 
uh, and that data is constantly making asinine statements that will cause you to facepalm constantly. Exactly. But this really, really impressive. Well, yeah, the uh, the next game in the series is Castlevania Mirror of Fate, uh, which will make Lords of Shadow seem even better by comparison. I promise you that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it is. I mean, going into the post credit scene, it definitely seems like a um, uh, it, it's it's a it's a downer ending, but it's about to get even crazier. So. Uh, don't go anywhere. Oh, no. For those of you who have played this game before, you know what's coming. For those of you who have played the game before, you know what's coming. And uh, everything has been leading up to this. For those of you who have not played this game, oh boy, things are about to get really nuts. So uh, so you guys know, um, I have not looked at any of the spoiler tags in the forum post, uh, which is over on Something Awful. Um, I have not spoken to my brother about us doing this let's play cuz he's finished this game. I think he's finished both games and and he has a tendency to spoil me. So I went into this bone dry. Okay. All right. And and thus far I've come out of it completely moist, so let's see if they ruin it. All right. What well, two seconds left? Here we go. An unusual hiding place for the Prince of Darkness. Don't you think? Zobak. Yes, old friend. It is I. Where have you been? 
all this time. Out there, amongst the living. And what of you? Why have you been hiding all this time? Gabriel. Don't you dare call me that. E. Sint Dracul! No doubt, you once were. But alas, look at you now. Hmm. A mere shadow of your former self. Shadow, am I? What do you want? Old friend. Satan's acolytes are readying for his imminent return. He is unlikely to welcome both of us with open arms. Don't you think? Help me stop him. Or you and I will become his favorite pets. For all eternity. It is time to get out of this wretched tomb you have made for yourself. Stop skulking in the shadows. Don't you care that he will enslave you? I know what it is you yearn for. I cannot die. Yet. I cannot live. Help me. And I can free you of your immortality. Well, that went places. Yeah, that that went to what looks like uh, London circa 2007. Uh, yeah, that is Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, just by judging by like the curved jumbotron. Anyway, time to get the last move, which we're going to use in the DLC. This is the other ultimate move. Uh, it's the ultimate shadow. Works a little different. Ultimate not, shadow. Not quite as it's a little harder to use than ultimate lights, but it's still pretty cool. Anyway. Now you know the big secret. Gabriel turns into Dracula. Oh my god. Um. Alright, I'll give it to him. That could be the best twist in a game ever. Uh, the the thread, I'm, I'm sure we'll have some thoughts about that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very controversial twist. Uh, particularly when it comes to how it's built up. Uh, the DLC takes place... Uh, a little a little bit afterward uh, and that's essentially the the lead up to uh, to how Gabriel becomes Dracula. To how Gabriel goes from a very sad man to the Prince of Darkness. 
Um, I do want to go over like a couple of things. Like there, there is some, some pretty interesting foreshadowing, uh, mostly in like tucked away in, in the lore. Um, for instance, if you've been, if you've been paying attention to some of the, 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 uh, the, the things from the travel book that I've been posting in this red, um, in okay. Gabriel's profile, there is a reference to, uh, uh, where, where it says that they, his true lineage is unknown, but it is rumored that he is an illegit- an illegitimate son of the Kronkvist family. Uh, that is another reference to Lament of Innocence. Matthias Kronkvist was uh, Leon Belmont's friend, who and Matthias Kronkvist uh, ended up being the uh, the disguise that Dracula used at the end of that game. Okay, and there are some. Uh, there are some references, other references, like at one point, uh, at one point, uh, Zobek just outright, outright refers to him as the Prince of Darkness. Um, there are, there are a lot of, a lot of references that Zobek makes to death that are, make a lot more sense if you treat them literally. And uh, at one point, Baba Yaga, back in chapter nine, said that when she was alerted, she was alerted, her, uh, her master alerted her to Gabriel arriving to arriving to her. And she said, and when Gabriel asked who her master was, she said the King of the angels, which is another name for Satan. Oh my God. So the game all but told us that this was how it was going to go down. Yeah, it was, it, it wasn't, uh, I mean, there, there were some, there, it probably could have done, a better job in some areas. I mean, in terms of like having the, uh, uh, in terms of having a lot of the more char- the character development on screen. Um, Cause a lot of, a lot of the more vicious side of Gabriel's character is just implied through Zobek's narration. Um, but uh, now, I, now I can kind of understand why I was reluctant to talk about Lords of Shadow two or really show you anything from it. Like I can't even show you, the box art. Um, I'm going to put it on screen and I'm also going to, uh, I'm also going to, uh, uh, to uh, post it to you in, in our discord messages. The, the, the box art for Lords of shadow two is pretty much just Gabriel as Dracula. Just outright. So, so straight up, you're just playing as Dracula in Lords of shadow two. Yes. Um, mirror of fate. Fuck yes. Mirror of Fate isn't. Uh, Mirror of Fate is not that. Uh, Mirror of Fate is yeah, more about the rest of the Belmont clan. Okay. Uh, his um, and his descendants, uh, and how it readapts the elements of like Castlevania one and three specifically. But uh, that's that's all later. First of all, we're gonna uh, we're gonna tackle the DLC, which goes into more detail as to how Gabriel actually became Dracula. So that's next video.